Hey guys, welcome back with the continuation of one of the topic of Redox. Basically, I must say this thing very clearly to all of you that this uh, topic, this term is not part of your syllabus. I mean to say this uh, term is not written in the syllabus of 5070 and it is not written in the syllabus of 0620. Let me give you a reminder. 5070 is the subject code for chemistry in GCE and 0620 is the subject code for chemistry in IGCSE. So both of these subjects syllabus Services are not including this term. And what is this term? This is called disproportionation reaction. A reaction in which proportion is disturbed. You may say this as it is. Okay. And why I am teaching you this? Because uh, sometimes examiner is asking questions related to, not related to this directly, but sometimes he can say this thing that, so, so which, what is the type of these type of the reactions and what is happening here, etc, etc. To cover all this content and to be, make the concept much clearer, to, to have a big concept and to have uh, a better concept, you may say I am giving you this short lecture related to this term. By the way, let me inform you very clearly that when we will teach you AS chemistry and over there, there is a chapter which is called redox reactions. In redox reactions over there, we are going to teach you the basics uh, which you have done in your O-levels and IGCSE. That is, what is oxidation, what is reduction and how to calculate the oxidation state and what is an oxidizing agent and what is a reducing agent. There will be the second half of this chapter in which we have to balance the equations related to exchange of electrons and related to their oxidation state, related to the presence of the hydrogens in, in reactants and products. In addition to that, there will be a small topic over there as well, and that is called as disproportionation reaction. So you may consider this thing that you are making your basis stronger for A-levels as well. You can consider this topic as, uh, as, as this, you may say, okay? So what are disproportionation reactions specifically before moving ahead i would like to inform you that for example there is a reaction in which uh, a is reacting for example a is a partner a is one of the reactant which is reacting with b for example in a chemical reaction and after the reaction you may say that uh, c is a partner as well for example we can say that one reaction it is making a b and in the other reaction it is making a c okay so we are watching this thing that a is shifting itself into one partner and a is shifting itself into an other compound into an other product as well we know this thing for example we have calculated the oxidation state of a we know this thing that a is shifting itself into two products so we have calculated the oxidation state of a here and we have calculated the oxidation state of a here okay according to the rules of oxidation state we have calculated the oxidation state for example for example just consider that a has an oxidation state of plus one here and it is for example minus two here and it is for example plus four here so we can say this thing that in a b oxidation state of a has been reduced so in case of a b we can say that a is undergoing reduction okay whereas in a c we know this thing that oxidation state of a has been increased so we can say that a is undergoing oxidation okay so here I am telling you that this is a reaction in which a same element A is undergoing oxidation and reduction. So we can definitely say this thing that this is called a disproportionation reaction. It is a type of reaction in which the same element is undergoing oxidation and reduction. So this type of the reactions are called disproportionation reactions. Okay. So I'm going to give you one example, one very common example of this type of the reactions. Let's look at that reaction. If I'm looking here, this is called as disproportionation reaction when Cl2 reacts with an alkali. So what is Cl2? It is called a chlorine gas when it is reacting with an alkali. What are alkalis? Let me give you a reminder. In the chapter of acid, base and salts of O levels and IGCSC, I have told it to you that bases are metal oxides, metal hydroxides, metal carbonates, and ammonia. Overall, these four are called as bases. Okay. 
we can say this thing what is the definition of a base a proton acceptor what was proton it was h plus 1 what is the definition of an acer a proton donor an acer which is stronger acer is releasing hydrogen ions completely is ionizing completely to give hydrogen ions is ionizing completely to give protons in water so what is the formula of proton it is h plus 1 then we can say this thing that in case of a base what is the definition of a base a proton acceptor so if i if i was telling you about the definition of the stronger acid and weaker acid stronger acid which ionizes completely to give hydrogen ions whereas weaker acid is the one which ionizes partially to give hydrogen ions so here we can say this thing that uh, and alkali are only only those bases which are soluble in water okay and alkali is basically uh an alkali is basically those substances which are soluble in water so for example bases are like metal oxides metal hydroxides metal carbonates and ammonia those which are soluble for example ammonia is an alkali as it is soluble all metal oxides and metal hydroxides of group number one are soluble in water so they are considered as an alkali as well so here we are reacting cl2 with an alkali and it is undergoing a specific type of a redox reaction which is called as disproportionation reaction okay now i am telling you that what is a disproportionation reaction here i am going to explain it again disproportionation reaction is a self oxidation reaction reaction for example chlorine is reacting uh, with an alkali so some molecules will oxidize whereas some molecules will reduce okay so these reaction products are depending upon the temperature as well there are two types of the reactions of chlorine and uh, an alkali as well one is happening at the low temperature different types of the products will be formed whereas the other is happening at the higher temperature and different types of the products are formed i'm going to share with you what are the products of the different types of the reactions here you can see this thing that here an alkali is reacting with chlorine at a high temperature whereas here an alkali is reacting with chlorine at a low temperature Tem temperature when it is higher we have considered it like 70 degrees celsius and the temperature when it is lower we have considered as at 15 degrees celsius okay let me zoom it a little bit okay <clears throat> we can see this thing that in this case a chlorine is reacting with hot alkali as a result of that chlorine is uh, making nacl naclo3 and water now might be many of you are thinking that do we need to memorize this if you are going to keep this type of the reactions in your mind things can become easier for you guys let me explain this thing to you very clearly that this reaction is very very important regarding as syllabus as well so it is just telling you that if you are going to keep this reaction in your mind it will be not helpful to you in your o levels and igcsc rather it will be helpful to you in your as level as well okay so those students who are sure about uh, considering this subject in their a levels they must uh, keep this thing and uh, might be if you are scoring good grades in your o levels inshallah then things can become changed and your ideas about the subject selection can be changed as well okay all the best to all of you so here i'm saying that chlorine is reacting with um, sodium hydroxide making nacl and naclo3 okay so here the what is the oxidation state of chlorine here it will be considered as zero why it will be considered as zero i have taught it to you already that in case of the free elements those elements which are not part of any compound they have an oxidation state of zero so we are going to consider it zero here and what about the oxidation state of na in nacl it is minus one and why it is minus one because cl is plus one uh cl is minus one here na is plus one here okay why na is plus one because we know this thing that na is a part of group number one and all the elements of group number one have an oxidation state of plus one in all the compound so we can say that na is plus one here whereas cl is minus one here okay so overall we can say that a cl is undergoing reduction because initially it was zero and in nacl it is minus one so um, it is uh, undergoing reduction if we are talking about the oxidation state of cl in naclo3 here na will be considered as plus one as per rules whereas oxygen will be considered as minus two as per rules as oxygen is a part of group number six its oxidation state will be always considered as minus two except for peroxide where it is different and i have taught it to you in the rules of oxidation states as well okay 
so how many oxygens are there three oxygens so it means that what will be the total oxidation state of oxygen it will be minus 6 and what about the oxidation state of na here it will be plus 1 so plus 1 and minus 6 what is the difference it will be minus 5 if it is minus 5 then definitely cl has an oxidation state of plus 5 Yes! Wow! Yes! Till now, we already know only one thing that chlorine is a part of group number seven. These are the halogens. These are the elements of uh, um, non-metals you may consider. It can be considered as group number seven or group number seventeen. Uh, but here, I can tell it to you that uh, in this case, chlorine has always shown the oxidation state of uh, minus one. But in this case, yes, in this case, it is going to give you an oxidation state of minus five. So it is just telling it. To you that in case of uh, chlorine we can consider that it is plus five here and it is zero here. So it means that it is undergoing a clear cut oxidation. So it is one of the reaction in which the same element is undergoing an oxidation and reduction. We are observing this reaction here. Okay. <clears throat> Guys, this is a little bit uh, you may consider an additional information, which is definitely helpful to you. That so here we know this thing that chlorine is a, a chlorine is the only gas which is changing the color of the both type of the litmus papers. So litmus papers are the specific type of the papers which are used to check the acidic or the basic nature of the substances. So in case of the litmus papers, basically there are two types of the litmus paper. One of them is red litmus paper, whereas the other is blue litmus paper. In case of chlorine, it is an acidic gas. and it is a bleaching agent as well so as it is an acidic gas so it is changing the color of the damp blue litmus paper to red whereas as it is an as it is a bleaching agent so it is changing the color of the damp red litmus paper to white as well so initially we are going to keep the damp blue litmus paper in the chlorine environment it will change its color from blue to red first and then from red to white finally and why this is i have explained the reason due to the these properties it is considering as one of the gas which is changing the color of both of the litmus papers whereas it is soluble in water and it is uh, you may say one of the very uh, very um, important industrial role of chlorine is that it is used as a disinfectant and it is used to kill the germs so here we are saying this thing that chlorine we are using in our swimming pools and water tanks you already know and you many of you people have witnessed the smell of the chlorine as well it is pinching and it is it is sometimes causing irritation in your nose and throat etc etc okay so re recall that swimming experience okay so here we are saying that there is a disproportionation reaction happening here as well okay what is that when chlorine is added to water it is making two types of the products one of the products is hcl whereas the other product is hclo okay in case of hcl what is the oxidation state of cl in hcl it is minus 1 whereas what is the oxidation state of hcl in hclo now the point is this that what is the difference between hcl and hclo hcl is hydrochloric acid or it is called as hydrogen chloride whereas hclo is perchloric acid per perchloric acid okay now what is the oxidation state i was talking to you regarding oxidation state in cl uh, in hcl it is called as uh, minus 1 whereas uh, cl in hcl low is plus 1 and why it is plus 1 oxygen has an oxidation state of uh, minus 2 here whereas h has an oxidation state of plus 1 here so what is the difference of plus 1 and minus 2 it will be minus 1 if it is minus 1 then cl is definitely plus 1 because this this has been clarified to you already that all the compounds are zero in their charge all the compounds have positive and negative partners in such a ratio that they are cancelling each other's effect and the final compound becomes zero okay so here we can say this thing that chlorine has an oxidation state of 0 initially and finally it is becoming minus 1 in hcl and finally it is becoming plus 1 in hclo so these are the differences which you need to keep in your mind afterwards here when we are saying that chlorine is reacting with a cold alkali we can say this thing that chlorine is making two types of the compounds again so please keep the keep the difference in your mind that with hotter alkali it is making nacl and naclo3 along with water and in case of the colder alkali it is making nacl naclo and water as well uh, do we need to keep the balanced chemical equations in your mind yes 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 you need to keep the balanced chemical equations in both cases in your mind it will become super helpful to you finally okay 
So what is the Cl2's oxidation state here? It will it is zero definitely because it is not part of any compound. Here in NaCl it is minus one, whereas in NaCl low it is plus one. So why where those Na's are gone? Because I have written the ionic equation, so Na is considered as a spectator ion. That's why it is no more there. I know this thing that from the word of the ionic equation, many of you are getting confused. O M G, what is an ionic equation and how to write that? Guys, the next lecture I am going to record uh, regarding uh, regarding um, this uh, this videos. It will be related to ionic equation. This is my pinky promise with you. This is my promise with you. Okay. So here we can say this thing that Cl has an oxidation state of zero before the reaction, and when it is reacting with NaOH in the colder Na in the colder uh, and, and NaOH, it is making NaCl in which it is minus one. Whereas in NaCl low, that is the other product, it is plus one. I would like to make this equation as well so that you people may not forget that how to write this ionic equation and water as well. Okay. So what is the oxidation state in one compound? It is undergoing reduction, whereas in the other compound it is undergoing oxidation so we can say this is also one of the disproportionation reaction okay afterwards i am going to give you another information which will be helpful to you for example we know this thing that in this case hclo was formed so in hclo that is called as chloric acid it is basically used to kill bacteria how because uh, some of the HClO is uh, converting itself into H plus and ClO one minus. This I have written over here as well. And this ClO one minus is used as a sterilizing. This ClO one minus is used as a sterilizing agent. This is used to. You may consider this is basically used to kill the germs. Okay. So this is how it is happening. This we need to keep in our mind. This we need to know this thing very clearly that. Uh, what are the products being formed as a reaction of the chlorine with the NaOH colder and chlorine with NaOH hotter and the products and their oxidation states as well. So they, these are the concepts related to the disproportionation reaction. Thus, before finishing this lecture, I would like to give you a hint that for the understanding of the disproportionation reaction, it is really, really important to understand the concepts of the redox first and understand the concept that uh, what is happening in any redox reaction and what is oxidation and what is reduction, etc., etc. So these concepts must be very, very clear to all of you regarding redox before shifting you towards uh, disproportionation reaction. Thank you very much, guys. All the best to all of you.